Welcome to another episode of the Culture Plug. Today we have a special guest, Ish. Thank you for coming. Um, he's a he has a podcast, Woody versus Poppy, Poppy yeah. or Basil. And let me just start off by asking, what what do you do? Because like, I see you do the podcast thing, and as I'm listening to your podcast, I notice you're into fashion. And then I overheard you in the interview say, I got something coming out, and I was like. You giving me very like Virgil vibes. Oh no! Nah. Um, Shout outs to Virgil though. No, nah, I have a um, I have a marketing firm, Coral Studios. So mm -hmm. um, I just do consulting for the underlayer of things that are going on. So like, like that type of world. I worked with like JetBlue. Who like worked with like companies like Nike. Did you know a little consulting here and there? None too big, but. Um, yeah, the consultant world is where I'm at. Clearly, if I do podcasts, I like talking. So I just like um, getting other situations from point A to point B and being a part of it. I'm into history, and I know that um, all of this stuff is going to be history soon, so I just want to be able to play my part in it. So, 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 you, don't, so you don't do anything within the fashion world? Or? I mean, if like fashion always gets put into it because fashion's in everything now, mm -hmm. but I don't have a brand per se. I don't. I have no, um, I don't have no horse in that race, but like, I might kiss hope for someone, but like, I'm not really the fashion person. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. yeah I dress like, like my friend Brick says, I dress like I'm going to a parent teacher conference. <laughs> so yeah. can you explain further what a consultant is? Um, consultant is just basically being able to help a bigger brand who has all the data, who has all the analysis, be able to skim through it quicker and just just guide them on like on things that they might not be up on game about you know mm -hmm. if i'm a specialist in knowing about i don't know um i want to use a ran random example mm -hmm. if i'm a specialist on the type of hot dogs kids from 19 to 25 eat and someone trying to sell some hot dogs they're probably going to pull up on me and be like yo we need to sell hot dogs to these yeah. kids you know so that's really what consulting is, just being able to give someone the inner code to what's going on in a world that they're not in, because mm -hmm. they can't be, mm -hmm. you know, nine to five. Okay. So what made you like pick, uh, what made you pick that line of work, like I want to be a consultant, like what sparked that idea? It started early when I was in a friend zone as a kid, no, I'm kidding, but um, <laughs> nah, um, I just always been conversational. And someone was, someone put a bug in my ear one time. They was like, yo, the way you talk to people, you should pay for it. It was just as simple as that. Yeah, and just being able to understand the the inner back situations of stuff. And also just knowing that I always been into how people get stuff done, but never being able to have access to it. Cause I was from the hood and I'm black and and those secrets aren't given out in our community so once I kind of got introduced to that world I was like well I can jump into it I'm not scared so who introduced you to that world the internet early on I've been wanting to do what I do now since I was 14 I just didn't know the name of it mm -hmm. I was in the cool shit I knew I wanted to be I wanted to make a living to pay bills off being cool that shit's a real thing. That shit is real. Not there's not no Instagram thing. There's not nothing about likes. This ain't nothing about aura. This is about knowing what the fuck is going on and being able to get paid off knowing what's going on and helping people who have no clue in on the world that you know all about. It's like imagine if someone tried to pay you to tell them about your own mother. Mm -hmm. You could do that with your eyes closed, right? Mm -hmm. So if someone's telling you about a culture that you know everything about or you know much more than they do, it's a no-brainer, you know? So can you explain, like, your early backgrounds? Because you said you were always in the cool shit, so, like... Yeah, I, um, I was just a guy who... I wore LeBrons before people wore LeBrons. I wore skinny jeans, like everyone says. I wore them when I felt compelled to wear them. I, I'm from Harlem, so, like... Living in Florida growing up really fucked me up because when you grow up in Harlem, you dress like people in rap videos because people forget that rap takes inspiration from the hood. The hood takes inspiration from rap and it's this little back and forth little um, situation, but people really forget that. So like when you're from Harlem, when you're a kid, you're probably going to have the jacket with all the NBA teams on it with the matching hat 
and some Air Force Ones. Now, take that inspiration of like some kid looking like Pat Poose in like 2002 <laughs> or three, and put that same kind of kid in like Jacksonville, Florida, where they know nothing about that. Mm. You're kind of like, like it's crazy. Like it's, um, it's like even thinking about it now, like the shit I wanted to pull off, the stuff I wanted to do as a kid wasn't normal stuff. It was just stuff that was just too, it was too organized. It was too close to like famous people shit. And most people aren't famous and they're not trying to be. They just want to be liked. And I wanted to have that energy of what I see on TV. I didn't realize that was just a front. I didn't know that was stylist and that was just whatever. Because I'm from Harlem. So like when you're from Harlem, you dress like what you see because we're the closest to the, you know, we're the closest to the source, if not the actual source. That's a fact. So that stuck with me for the rest of my life. So like when I seen like a Lupe wear a hoodie, I was like, oh, I like that hoodie. I think I want to buy that hoodie. I didn't realize, oh, you can't afford that hoodie at the moment. You can't have that hoodie because you're not accessible to it. So all that type of shit, I was just like, nah, I'm not having it. So at 14, 15, so 14, what, that's like 2004 for me because I was born 1990. So like what? I basically wanted everything that I saw on TV. So it manicured me basically to be able to learn about how, where to get this stuff from. So. I had to jump on the internet early. Probably knew about Karma Loop before anybody. Probably knew about Pick Your Shoes before anybody. Probably oh, yeah, knew about shoes. Nike yeah. Talk early on before most kids did. Was waiting in line at stores in New York before most kids were. Knew about Nike ID on Elizabeth Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knew, knew about, you know, Stash's store. Knew, knew about collaborations before most kids cared about that stuff. Knew about Hypebeats.com when it was like first founded. Like, those type of things is like, that's not even the Bible. That's like the, that's like the fucking first feast of like everything, like like coming, like like digital. Mm -hmm. So. So basically, you put yourself on, in a in a sense. Did you like? Was there a member in your family, a family member? Nah, it was not to cut you off. I know this, the answer. Shout out to my best friend Reggie, my my homie. He had Wi-Fi in like two thousand four or five. Like no yeah, one had Wi-Fi yeah, yeah, at that no, time. 2004, 2000. He had Wi-Fi. The phone situation. No, trust yeah. me, trust me. He had Wi-Fi because yeah. I was 14 wow. in ninth grade. He so had he had Wi-Fi. Wi like at home? No, no, I was living in Florida. Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he gonna love this interview because yeah. his, his mother had a nugget head ass boyfriend yeah. who was really good into like he was he used to play like um. The early on Call of Duties and it was like so calm. It was oh, so yeah, calm yeah, on yeah, PS2. Yeah, it was like yeah. Call of Duty before Call of Duty, and he had like all that shit set up on Reggie's PS2. He would play that shit, and we would be on all these computers. He had a computer. He had a computer room. He had a computer in his room, and we would just go in there and like go on like MySpace and go on other people's pages and learn about fashion and mm -hmm. other dope shit and just being put on. Like it was like we was always above our area. Most kids can't do that. They're not into that. Like, they're scared of that. But not anymore. But at that time, they were scared. So, like, we were front runners in our area. So, can you explain that a little further? Because I feel like that time period that you're talking about, that was kind of like, I guess you could say, like a golden era, so to speak, in a certain sense. Like, You know what I would call it? I would call it for people like Flacco, people like, I guess you might as well say, like a... Um, a Travis Scott, a, a me, my friends, my circle. That's the genesis. Yeah. Mm. That's where, like, if you was really, if you really are a contributor to, to the highest degree of culture, because I don't call it fashion anything, culture, that was the genesis for us. For some people, that was their prime, and I feel bad for them because they worked really hard mm -hmm. to get us where we're at now. And there's people even before those people, like Alex Turnbull and, and Frazier Cook and the original Stussy fam and like Dallas Penn and mm -hmm. Fat Five Freddy. It goes on and on. There's so many people who really manicured the culture for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. But that was the, gen the genesis for us. So like, it was a big deal, man. It was a lot going on. And it, it was really important because it really helped you learn how to traverse the internet. So I learned how to use the internet much better than most people now to the point where any new technology, I'm not scared of it the way most people are. Like they're like, what the fuck, oh, you know, to put the tape on the fucking um, on a laptop. Oh, they looking at me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. You you gotta know what you're getting into. You know what I mean? You 
you cook fried food, there's a chance you can die. Technically, there is. Technically, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. at the latest, at the least, you're gonna get popped by some fucking grease. Mm-hmm. But you go into that knowing that because you want some fucking fried food. Mm-hmm. You know, when you skydive, you know there's small as the percentage it is, this is the percentage you're asking to fucking die. Like the, the, the lady who just recently died on the plane, she didn't wake that up saying, yeah, I'm gonna get sucked out a window. Yeah, that's crazy. But she knew that's uh, there was a that's chance of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there was a small percentage, she didn't give a fuck about that percentage, but she, you, you know, you yeah, live with that. Yeah. So, like, most people in that early on stage, I feel like we understand what we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And that's why so many people, I think, are so um, uptight, kind of, because I'm 27 now, so you see, you see a lot of people uptight about the culture. They're like, oh, we didn't do this, we didn't do that. Or you got people like Jay-Z. He, you know, he said stuff like, and in, in, you know, on that Rick Ross album, he's like, I had a grill in 88, y'all niggas is late. There's no such thing as being late. How can someone be late? You put them on. Mm-hmm. How could they be late unless they were your age That's and exactly. now they're wearing a grill? Yeah. So unless you're talking to 2 chains, nigga, you ain't talking to nobody <laughs> because I was not born in 88. I was not able to reap those benefits of having a grill in 88. So who the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. So what are some of the main differences that you see from that time and now, in um, terms of culture, specifically? My time or like a time before me? No, your time and this time now. Oh, it was naked. It was naked and you. Um, it was no way to get rewarded for it. The only way you would get rewarded if you seen someone around who looked like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that was the reward. Seeing someone who looked like you so you could be able to say, yo, I see you. this person is on the same wavelength yeah, as me. that's a fact. And yeah. stuff. And it was, it was more like underground now everything that i used to tell my hood friends about in florida or <laughs> whatever that's just the norm now i remember wearing levi 501 jeans were considered skinny jeans and now those jeans are considered baggy mm-hmm. and i just remember being able to fight the fight that everybody fought in different areas it's basically like a war you got to think like when someone goes to war everyone is in like, like in one territory like when we go God forbid we have another war, but when there's like, I went to school for history, so like World War II, there was people fighting in Germany, there was people fighting on certain shorelines, like mm-hmm. there's different fights everywhere, you know what I mean? That's why they have the Navy, that's why they have the Army, that's why they have the Air Force, mm-hmm. there's different fights everywhere. Mm-hmm. So like everyone fought the fight, but like, you know, it's really interesting because everyone has a different perspective of what he was fighting. And I have friends who was fighting in Atlanta, I have friends who was fighting in DC. Mm-hmm. Friends was fighting in LA, shout out to Barlow's. And her friends was fighting it in New York. So like, everyone had it differently, but like, I just remember telling them, like, y'all gonna be real mad if the shit we like turns to be, turns, you know, if, if the cup flips and this shit is number one, you know, enter Kanye West. But uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just, it was, yeah. you know, so with that, it was just definitely a lot more discreet and then, it was it was harder to get stuff. I really like how accessible it is now. I'm not mad at it. Um, I, in this interview, whoever's watching this on YouTube, whoever, check me if I'm wrong. You will never hear me hate on anybody who does anything I don't do. That makes it more fun for me to be me. I would never hate on someone else yeah. being them, even if they were trying to be me. They're just a variant. Why would I be mad at that? Mm-hmm. You, like you need copycats in order to see what the real thing is. Yeah, yeah. You need the real thing to see what the fake is. That's true. You need the people who don't know to understand why what you're doing is important. Everybody plays a role. People just be mad because they don't be where they want to be in life. Niggas be mad that rent not paid three months in advance. And that's a personal issue. But don't put that on wax and make it seem like there's an epidemic. Because mm-hmm. it isn't. It's all about true, true creativity. And if you really got the sauce, you don't give a fuck about what no one else is doing because there's no reason to because if you're doing the right thing you're really telling the right story and no one will hate on you later and fame has nothing to do with it some of the most powerful people in like in culture any nobody in this room knows now i got to know some of them and i feel grateful about that but i know i wouldn't have known them if it wasn't for certain situations because these people aren't people to be known i mean to be known like you got to really dig and learn who the fuck really put, is pushing stuff forward and making stuff happen for people, you know what I'm saying? And it ain't the people you see at face value. It's never that, mm-hmm. you it's know what I mean? Team. It's the people behind them. Mm-hmm. Like, if you 
if you treated culture like a store, that would think, like think about that. Okay, so like when a 14 year old kid thinks if you work at Supreme, you might design it. But they don't know yeah, yeah, there's yeah. someone somewhere, somewhere else who probably designs that shit. Yeah. You know, they're thinking about a face or like if you're mad at a company, if you're mad at McDonald's, you, you it's not like you go home and you email McDonald's, you yell at the person who's serving you. Yeah. But they're just a face for what's going on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So clearly in this culture, if you see someone who's just a face of something, you can't get mad at them or you can't believe that they're the person who's got who's moving it forward. There's clearly someone behind the scenes. And that kind of enters into my yeah. work life. That's, That's who I am. That's I'm the person behind the scenes. Well, yeah, but on a smaller scale, it'll get bigger with time. Cause all this shit is nothing but a um a age thing. Once you get older, they give you more job opportunities. Okay. Simple. So um, I know you were telling me you were working on an assignment in regards in someone that has a fashion line. Can you elaborate? Like, how does one get into like the fashion world with that? How did you get to that point? Um, like with certain people. They have a lot going on, but you don't have to necessarily work on one entity with them. It's more of a conversational thing mm -hmm. because conversations lead to creativity. It's not actually like, oh, I need you to do this. Like, um, that's a, um, I want to use the right word because I don't want to sound um, like an idiot because I was going to say something really stupid. But, like, okay, so like, if someone is an engineer, that's their job. They come in with a, a description. Hey, you're engineers so or whatever I make, I need you to do the mathematics of it. You get what I'm saying? That's black and white. But if someone's doing something creative, they might just need you there just to oversee their opinion. They might need you to second guess it. They might need you to question it. They might need to give, you, you know, you might need to give them a second eye, I mean, a second set of eyes for something that they didn't catch or something like that. So, with based with what you're talking about, um, it's, it's actually nothing fashion related. It's just the experience because you can look at someone like a um, you can look at someone's brand like a, um, a ASAP Rocky or Kanye West. Mm -hmm. with, with their situations, it's never just one thing. It's the mood of how it feels. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like you wear people wear Fear of God like Kanye West, and Fear of God is not Kanye West's brand. It's Jerry Lorenzo's brand. People like Off White like Kanye West. And it has nothing to do with Kanye West. It's just, it's, it comes from that family tree. But how do you get that vibe? The music, his clothes, what he says, who he hangs with. So you have to be an embodiment of that, I assume, in those situations, you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. You, you have predicted that um, Virgil was going to be Louis Vuitton's um, creative director. How did you know that? Because I don't think like the average person wakes up and say, Purchase was gonna be the yeah, the time. Yeah. Yeah. How did you how um, did you predict that? Well, I'm gonna let the cat out the bag, like for the sake of just telling the truth. It was a prediction, like for the sake of me just not spilling tea. But oh, okay, okay. But okay, if okay. you know anything about that world, you knew something was coming because the way LVMH works the way Kim Jones moves, the way fashion moves. But most people don't even know who these designers are. Most people don't give a fuck about Ricardo Tichy. Most people don't care about Hedy Slimane. People don't care about who did what and who did You know, people wouldn't have known about Rob Simmons if it wasn't for A$AP Rocky, thank God. You know, but he designed for Dior. People never cared that it was his lineage or anything. People don't know who the Karen is. People don't, you know, know who Chris Van Ash is in terms of him as being a designer doing people using this word at appointments at uh at um like bigger brands but being in the in, being in that world you learn that um certain things are bubbling and certain people just have certain leverage with certain companies mm -hmm. and certain entities and you know him being smart he shot his shot, you know? He, I guess he jumped in LV's, LVMH's DMs and they was like, let's get it, you know? So, um, <laughs> but if, if, they're, if, they're, if they're interested in someone and someone works with them and someone has to cut out the bag a little bit, you know, you can kind of put two and two together, you know? Kim Jones has been around as long as yeah, he's been around. You know, if anyone goes to Kanye University, Kanye's old blogs, and by the way, anything that happened on the internet that's not there anymore, there's a, a, a website 
that archive the whole internet. You could go back on basically most internet sites and see damn near any any page. You might not be able to click on it fully and be fully engulfed, but you can go back and you can go back to Kanye's old blog and you can see him talk about Kim Jones and being mad cool with Kim Jones. So like this is years in the making for those guys. So it would only make sense that they're helping each other and making things make sense for them. So yeah. Okay. I know that you stated in the interview like um Art Basil is a is this is in every year it when you when Art Basil comes around, it's like important just to see like how you did overall during the year, I guess career wise or what what's the like what's behind Art Basil? I thought Art Basil was more so just go out there, there's a lot of galleries and stuff going around and you taking pictures and I I was well, Art Basel, um, well, yeah, Art Basel is really just... You see, I say, I say Art Basel, you say Art Basel, you see the difference? I was a little... Well, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, nah, it's cool, it doesn't matter, it's uh -huh. like tomato, tomato, I'm assuming. But, okay. um, I believe that what Art Basel has turned into is a platform for all creatives, but clearly there's an art background to it, first and foremost, 3D art, contemporary, mm -hmm. pop art you know, installations, everything. It's really just a hub for all artists to be able to sh like showcase stuff and have their, um, forgot the word, but it's in the line of the curators and I forgot the word, but basically to really get your shit off. But for true creatives, it's become basically like, I would say like the playoffs for creators. If you're really creative, that's your playoffs. So. If you have a rapper in your mind, you think he's creative, and he wasn't at Art Basel, he's not creative. Mm. Because they, they wasn't there, or they didn't have someone there on their behalf to be able to soak in what's going on, because what goes on there, and it's more than just Art Basel in Miami. There's, they, they have it in Japan, they have it in different countries as well. You know, it goes on tour, the way like a sneaker con would, oh, or the way a, um, a, um, a, a, a Comic Con, or a, you know, like conventions, things like that, you know, like car shows, mm -hmm. you know, things that let you see the past, the future, the now, you know, so it's very much like that. So um, it's just a, a way to really meet up with your peeps and work and have fun and be able to see, you know, because really if you, you know, I, I think I said this, if you work really hard all year by December for America's Art Basel, you can do your thing out there because you've yeah, grinded yeah. all right now. Like right now, I should be doing something important. So I am. So next December, I should be able to be there. If I'm not there, I fucked up somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, same thing with the playoffs. Same thing with the playoffs. If you didn't win those 50 games to get into the playoffs, you watching at home. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to watch at home. I want to be in the mix because you don't want to miss that look. You don't want to miss that opportunity because that's when the world can shrink for you. And that's gets like, shit gets me goosebumps right now talking about it. Like, I come from nothing. So to be able to make the world shrink like that for me is like, that shit's bigger than the internet, like Instagram, shit like that. Like, you think the Instagram matters when you're there right with people who you think are your idols or your people you think are your colleagues and you're contributing to their day or, or you're contributing to the culture that you you consume off of or you do things off of, that's what it's about. That real shit. You know what I mean? There's people who read books all day, there's people who buy books, but there's also people who make books. Who do you want to be? You know? You don't get to be these people by listening to J. Cole. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's a joke, that's a joke, that's a joke. That's a joke. You can keep that part though, you can keep that. But, um, <laughs> you, you, you gotta get into the fight, you know? You gotta be creative and you gotta get out there. And yeah, so I love it. 